The prevailing narrative suggests that Airbus A350 has won the widebody battle. Yet there is a clear contradiction the A350-1000 variant has repeatedly been rejected by the industry's largest and most influential customers. Meanwhile, despite years of delays, Boeing's 777X remains a latent threat to Airbus's dominance, placing the European manufacturer in a far less comfortable position than it may seem. To defeat Boeing outright, Airbus needs more than the current A350. It needs a decisive strategic move. And that move may be the A350neo. But what exactly is it and can it truly stop the 777X? Let's find out. Long before the idea of an A350neo entered public discussion, the warning signs were already there. In the wide-body market, success is never static. Aircraft that dominate one decade can become liabilities in the next if they fail to evolve alongside shifting operational realities, harsher environments, and rising airline expectations. Airbus now finds itself precisely at that inflection point where past brilliance is no longer sufficient to guarantee future dominance. When the A350 first entered service, it was nothing short of revolutionary. Built around an advanced carbon composite architecture, it reset industry benchmarks for fuel efficiency range and passenger comfort. The variants 900 and 1000 quickly became strategic cornerstones for major airlines across Europe and Asia, proving that Airbus had successfully rewritten the rules of the long-haul wide-body market. Yet aviation history has repeatedly shown that best-in-class does not mean perfect for everyone, especially as the manufacturer began pushing the aircraft into territory once ruled by true giants like the A380 and the Boeing 747. The cracks began to show most clearly in the world's most demanding operating environments. Ultra-high utilization hubs such as Dubai and Doha expose aircraft to extremes. Few other regions can match relentless heat abrasive sand and near-continuous flight cycles. In these conditions, jet engines face accelerated wear and reliability margins shrink rapidly. It is here that the current XWB family has encountered its most serious strategic challenge. Persistent durability concerns, particularly surrounding engine performance in harsh desert climates, have prevented the aircraft from achieving the level of operational confidence required by Gulf carriers. What might be manageable elsewhere becomes unacceptable in markets where downtime translates directly into massive financial losses. This vulnerability is magnified by the looming presence of Boeing's 777X. Despite years of delays and certification setbacks, the 777X remains a formidable threat on paper. It promises greater seating capacity and superior economics per seat mile advantages that directly target the upper end of the long-haul market where the A350-1000 struggles to fully compete. As long as this gap exists, Airbus's position at the top of the wide-body segment remains incomplete and exposed. But perhaps more damaging than the technical issues themselves is the erosion of confidence they have caused among industry leaders. Few moments have been more telling than the highly publicized criticism voiced by figures such as Emirates President Sir Tim Clark. His remarks transformed what could have been dismissed as isolated engineering challenges into a broader question about the jetliner's long-term adaptability under extreme operational stress. When customers of that stature expressed doubt, the manufacturer was suddenly confronted with a stark choice defend the status quo or take a decisive technological leap forward. It is within this context that the A350neo emerges not as a luxury but as a strategic necessity. Discussions around a midlife upgrade reportedly began as early as 2018-2019, with Airbus exploring the idea of re-engining the aircraft to preserve its competitiveness well into the future. The logic was clear. By addressing the aircraft's remaining weak points, especially engine durability and efficiency in Gulf conditions, the manufacturer could neutralize its most vocal critics and restore confidence among the industry's most demanding customers. Beyond solving existing problems, the Neo variant also opens the door to a far more ambitious objective directly confronting the 777X at the top end of the market. A re-engined A350, potentially including a stretched A350-2000 variant, would allow this manufacturer to close the gap in seating capacity while preserving the inherent weight advantages of its composite airframe. Combined with next-generation engine technology, this would significantly narrow or even eliminate Boeing's advantage in unit costs and payload capability within the critical 400-seat segment. So what is the A350neo, by the way? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, you're going to love what's coming next. If the original A350 was Airbus's technological statement to the world, then the A350neo is its strategic counter-strike. This is not a routine upgrade nor a cosmetic refresh designed to extend a product cycle. This new version represents a deep physical and technological transformation, one aimed squarely at redefining what a large, long-haul widebody can endure, 
deliver and dominate in the most unforgiving corners of global aviation. At its core, the NEO designation new engine option signals where the most consequential change begins propulsion. The most visible and symbolically important upgrade would be the aircraft's new heart widely expected to be the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan. With a record-breaking fan diameter, these engines would immediately give the aircraft a more muscular commanding presence on the ramp. But their significance goes far beyond appearance. Ultrafan is built around an entirely new architecture, combining a geared design with advanced carbon-titanium composite fan blades. The result is an ultra-high bypass ratio that promises fuel efficiency gains of roughly 10 to 25 percent over today's Trent XWB engines. This leap in efficiency fundamentally changes the aircraft's operating economics. Lower fuel burn translates directly into reduced emissions, quieter operations, and dramatically lower costs on the world's longest routes. Just as importantly, the ultrafan architecture is designed to run cooler and more efficiently under sustained stress, an attribute that becomes decisive in extreme climates. While alternative engine concepts have been studied over the years, including advanced GE derivatives incorporating GE9X technologies, or even ultra-high bypass geared turbofans from Pratt & Whitney, or Safran CFM Rolls-Royce's exclusivity agreement on the A350-900 and 1000 through at least 2030, makes ultrafan the most realistic and strategically aligned choice. In many ways, the A350neo's timeline has been shaped as much by engine readiness as by airframe ambition. Yet engines alone do not define the new aircraft. To fully achieve its strategic goals, the manufacturer is expected to reshape the aircraft itself, potentially quite literally. One of the most intriguing possibilities is a further stretch of the platform. Approaching 80 meters in length, this variant would push the XWB family decisively into the 400-plus seat category, a territory currently targeted by the Boeing 777X. Thanks to its predominantly composite structure around 53% composite materials supplemented by titanium and advanced aluminum alloys, the aircraft would retain a crucial weight advantage despite its increased size. What's more, the fuselage's oval cross-section, with an internal cabin width of roughly 5.61 meters, 18.4 feet, allows for highly efficient layouts without sacrificing passenger comfort. In a standard 10 abreast configuration, it could match or exceed the seating capacity of its largest competitors while maintaining the higher cabin pressure and humidity levels that have become hallmarks of the A350 experience. In other words, density would increase, but not at the expense of long-haul comfort, a key differentiator for airlines operating ultra-long sectors. Notably, to support this added length and weight, the wing would not remain untouched. Expect further aerodynamic refinement, including sleeker, higher-performance sharklets and potentially adaptive wing technologies capable of subtly reshaping themselves in flight. These systems would optimize lift and minimize drag across different phases of flight extracting maximum efficiency from every kilogram of fuel burned. Combined with incremental airframe refinements such as flap optimization, localized drag reduction, and structural weight savings that could approach 10% in certain areas, the new variant would achieve carbon dioxide emissions roughly 25% lower than previous generation wide bodies. The cumulative effect of these changes is profound. Per seat operating costs could fall by 10 to 20% depending on configuration and mission profile. Range and payload flexibility would improve. Noise footprints would shrink further and airlines would gain a level of operational versatility that today's large wide bodies struggle to match simultaneously. However, the most critical upgrades may be the ones passengers never see. The new variant is expected to be fundamentally hardened for operation in the world's most punishing environments. Advanced heat reflective coatings, redesigned internal cooling systems, and turbine materials specifically engineered to resist sand abrasion would dramatically extend maintenance intervals. This directly addresses the concerns raised by Middle Eastern carriers for whom engine durability in extreme heat is not a theoretical issue, but a daily operational reality. More than that, inside the cockpit and beneath the skin, the aircraft would become smarter as well. Next-generation avionics increasingly supported by artificial intelligence could optimize flight paths in real time based on weather, air traffic, and fuel efficiency. A digital structural nervous system would continuously monitor airframe health predicting wear and fatigue before they become operational disruptions. In effect, the A350neo would evolve into a long-haul athlete with both physical endurance and cognitive awareness able to fly farther, work harder, and remain reliable under sustained pressure. Taken together, these elements explain why the new variant is far more than an incremental evolution. It is Airbus's attempt to close every remaining gap in its wide-body portfolio at once efficiency capacity, durability, and long-term adaptability.
By combining a next-generation propulsion system with a refined stretched airframe and invisible yet crucial resilience upgrades, the manufacturer is positioning the jetliner not merely to compete, but to dominate. In that sense, the A350neo is best understood as a statement of intent. It signals that Airbus is no longer content with leading the market in theory or on paper. Instead, it aims to own the harshest routes, the busiest hubs, and the most demanding customers setting the standard for long-haul aviation for decades to come. While the technology behind a re-engined A350 is ambitious yet achievable, the commercial consequences are far more uncertain and potentially far more damaging. The most immediate threat is the classic Osborne effect. The mere announcement of a clearly superior Neo variant risks freezing current purchasing decisions as airlines delay or cancel orders in anticipation of the future aircraft. For Airbus, this danger is especially acute because the A350-1000 already occupies a fragile position in the market. Even without a Neo, it faces resistance from top-tier customers. Introducing a version that promises roughly 10% or more better performance could abruptly drain demand from the existing model, turning today's flagship into tomorrow's stopgap. Even more delicate is the internal competition the new version could unleash within Airbus's own wide-body portfolio. A dramatically more efficient A350 risks encroaching on the upper end of the A330 Neo's market. Today, the A330 Neo thrives as a lower cost solution for medium and long haul routes, but if an A350 Neo delivers superior seat mile economics airlines, may justify the higher acquisition cost and consolidate fleets around a single more capable type. In that scenario, the A330 Neo could become prematurely obsolete, not because it failed, but because its bigger sibling became too good. This is the strategic tightrope Airbus must walk. The company must design an aircraft powerful enough to neutralize the 777X without simultaneously hollowing out the value of its existing products. Yet in the unforgiving arithmetic of aerospace competition, self-cannibalization is often unavoidable. Faced with the choice between competing with itself or surrendering the large wide-body market to a rival Airbus should be willing to accept the lesser risk because losing internally is still better than losing outright. In conclusion, while the A350neo remains strategically viable, the manufacturer is prioritizing the production ramp-up of existing models. With the A350F's maiden flight and Qantas' ULR deliveries scheduled for 2026, the urgency for a Neo variant has temporarily cooled. Airbus is choosing to maximize its current success, waiting for the perfect moment to deploy the A350neo as its ultimate weapon against future competition. Thank you for joining us today, and we wish you safe flights always.